Now, I'm not going to lie. I was puzzled by this game for a couple different reasons. Number one, Scythia and I had only heard in like Colossians 3.11 where the Apostle Paul is talking about unity in Christ and, and you're Scyth no, nobody's a Scythian or barbarian. That's the only term I'd known for it. I didn't know what this, this group of people was. But then I dug into the research and found out, okay, wait a minute. The Scythians were these the, the people that, that, that became the modern day this or this or this. And really fascinating history of this, of this people. But I was also confused because... I love Raiders of the North Sea, and I was like, well, wait a minute, why does this game, why does this game? You know what I'm Not like, what is this game, but why does this game, right? And so I was curious and trying to dig into it and figure, well, why was this re-implementation made? I still don't know the why, but I know that Raiders of Scythia is a re-implementation of Raiders of the North Sea with a different art style and a few different tweaks from the expansions and stuff from Raiders of the North Sea, all into this game to where if you looked at this on the shelf, the word Raiders is in it, but nothing else is, and you may never know that they're related if you hadn't played Raiders of the North Sea first. It's kind of like if you watch Raiders of the Lost Ark, you might be like, oh, is this a game about Vikings? No, of course not. But what I'm saying is, you may not know that, but this game and Raiders of the North Sea are essentially the same game with a different skin on it, with a different, uh, a couple different tweaks to the ratings and, and smooth things out. So if you know why, let me know in the comments below. And I'm not being a jerk. I'm not, I'm not saying, why should this, this shouldn't exist. I disagree with that too. I, I, in the last video I just filmed a second ago, I said that the people who say the word Ameritrash and Dry Euro, if they can all just scram. Well, anybody who takes offense to the fact that I said, why does this game exist? You can just scram too, because I'm not being rude about it. I'm asking legitimately what was the reason for it is it so that there this is almost like a sequel or a second edition i'm open to all that watch my reviews i love sequels love second editions love re-implementations so let me know in the comments below what is up with this steam game and all that sort of stuff and uh give me your favorite scythian story too let's do that so i'm <laughs> let's dive into Raiders of scythia right now all about rating all about Scythians and Assyrians for that matter, and Persians and Greek, and an isometric view. Let's take a look right now. All right, this is Raiders of Scythia set up here. It's a main board. Uh, as well as a player board. Now, some of this is going to feel very familiar if you've played Raiders of the North Sea, ideally because it's almost the same game. So you're going to line these up here. You'll start with one hero and one crew member. To start with on your player board, you have room for four other crew members. You're also going to start with one of the blue meeples. Now, the meeple choices matter. Look at that. They've got their little Scythian hats on. How awesome. They matter for certain actions up on the main board. These four sections here with Camaria, which I want to know if that's uh, ancient Samaria. I'm going to have to look that up. Camaria, Assyria, Persia, Greece. These areas are places that you can go and raid. Up top are your basic action selection spaces of a normal, typical worker placement game. And don't hear me say that as a pejorative. That's a good thing. But this game, along with its predecessor, does a very important twist, which I love. When you take an action, you will place a worker on an open action space. So let's say I do the meeting tent. That will draw me two of these crew cards here into my hand. You'll also have a hand of three cards, by the way. Draw two of these. And then I will take a meeple off somewhere else. So let's say I take it off of the barracks. Well, then I could hire someone is what that action means. So when you place, you do the action. And when you pull, you do the action. So essentially, you're getting two actions around when you play up here. Now, the other option is you could raid. If you want to raid, you have to have the certain requirements, which would be provisions and or uh, actual carts or wagons or whatever these brown things are called. I don't really remember the title of them, but they're these different one, two, three, four, five, six hexagonal sided resources. There's gold, there's animals, there's uh, wagons, and I, I don't know, there's stuff. But, you know, regardless, you need the brown one to raid sometimes. When you raid, you'll place it on an area that contains the color of meeple that you have. So I can do this. You have to have two crew members. So I don't yet, but let's just give me one for free. So I now have two crew members with a strength total of three. See the top, or six, three plus three is six. So that's my strength total. I then would have to spend three provisions, which would be these little doodads here. Not the one in the middle, that's Camille. It's a, some sort of healing potion. Probably wine or some sort of history, I don't know, whatever. You're gonna then pay that, then you will get your total. If your total is any of these resource, these thresholds here, you can have the points associated with it or the benefits associated with it or the detriments associated with it. So if we have a strength of four, plus you're gonna roll one red dice based on this, you're gonna take the total and on the red dice you see 
all the dice sides are listed down here. There's a chance to get damage, damage, nothing except add strength. These are ways to add strength. You can also spend that little tan one in there to add strength to your total if you need to. You'll check the results and then you will raid that area. So once you've raided an area here, you'll take the goods off of it. So that's how you get these essentially. It's the only way to get some of them. You'll take these. Now, if there's a yellow dice there, you're, I mean, a, a yellow there, a gold there, you're gonna need to roll yellow dice as well. You'll take these, do the damage. Your damage on a crew member is only as high as their strength. So if this person takes three damage, they're gone. However, if they take two, any damage on them is reduces their strength by that amount of damage. So if, if they have two damage on them, her strength is only a one. You then flip over this. This becomes a um, a tile that you can go for. What are those called? Why is my mind just stopping on that? What are those called? Those are called quests. You can quest for that at the chief stint. The chief stint allows you to either trade in one sheep, which would be this, for two supplies and one Camille. I can't remember if that's the name for that or not. What is that called? Yeah, Kumis. There's no L in there. Kumis. Don't know what it is. Look it up. Somebody tell me in the comments historically, what is a Kumi? I could do it myself, but I like to engage you. If you were to go to the chief's tent and trade these in, and yes, you will accidentally call that the chef's tent a lot because just it's what happens. You trade in those three things to get four victory points. One of the in-game conditions is if there are two quests left on the board or are there are only two spaces left to raid. Now these ratings are set up based on player count. You notice that you don't have any here for three players or for two players. You don't have any here or here for four for two players as well. So that's how you raid. You get those benefits, you get those bonuses. A couple of other things that are unique to this version are the stables. First of all, there are animals that you can now use. You can give somebody an eagle, falcon, eagle, they're eagles. You can give them an eagle or you can give them a horse. Some of them allow you to take the hero actions on your card, which you would normally have to discard to play. That would be these actions on the right-hand side, the blue in there. Normally you'd have to discard this card at the town center to play this, but if you had an eagle tucked behind this guy, you would then be allowed to use it as if it were a hero action, which is the action on your hero card here. Spend two silver to gain one horse. Once you do that, you can then, that's what this eagle does. However, you could have given it to him as a horse. So this horse will allow you to have three strength. So this person would have a strength of seven in your crew if you had the horse on him. That's a pretty good, strong um, fighter there. So. Horses and eagles are pretty awesome. They just add certain benefits. Uh, that's the majority of the game, though. There isn't any kind of other trickery except knowing that. You're going to do the actions up there. Some are gain silver. They change depending on which meeple color you go there with. Some are gain supplies. Some are trade in, uh, discard two cards to gain either one of these or one of these, which are needed to raid. And then other ones are gain cards, play cards, recruit people, heal by spending a kumi, and then uh, grab the stables and stuff. Oh, by the way, when you do raid, you take the meeple that's above it. So that's the only way to get gray and red meeples into play. Some places require you to have gray and red meeples in order to use them. So you'll have to take them to play them. You can only ever have a crew member, a uh, crew limit of five. Everything else is a hard limit of eight, except for these types of goods. And then after that, game's over. You score points based on your final points that you already have from raids and quests and all that sort of stuff. Not to mention your gold is worth two points a piece. These silver ones, these then two of these are worth one a piece. That is how you play Raiders of Scythia. So that's Raiders of Scythia. Pretty straightforward. Looks good. It's got that isometric view. I like this. Settle down now. I like this art style better than the Raiders of the North Sequence. I know, I know, I know. It's huge. North Sea, West Kingdom, I'm sure we're going to get an Eastern Frontier. I don't know, but something else will come, right, with this same kind of art style and same theming. But I like it better. I like this kind of flat, almost like a art historical history book. It almost looks like a history book. Looked, I do. I like it better. Sorry. Um, I love the eagles in this game and the horses. I think that's a little tweak. It's not much. It doesn't change much in the game mechanics. But I like it. I think it adds enough to the game to where you go, oh, that was a good tweak. I'm glad they did that. I think it's really good. Um, I like the fact you get the player board on the bottom. That was a pull from the other expansions. Um, the, the different quests that go out on the board. I like the quest. I like the fact that when you raid, you turn it into a quest to where, okay, you raided that place, but it's still useful because you get the quest. So, all in all, Raiders of the North Sea has always been one of my favorite games because the mechanics 
Uh, I'm pretty sure if it didn't make my top 100, that was because I forgot, not because it didn't deserve it. I love Raiders of the North Sea. Um, the idea of putting a worker down, doing the action, pulling a worker off somewhere and do the action is such a good mechanic that needs to be copied and, and ripped off and whatever you want to call it. I think it's great because it's not just worker placement, it's worker placement and pull in which they both do something. So your turn consists of two actions to where the pulling could benefit your next turn or the putting could benefit the pulling. Smart game. As well, I like the fact that some of the prerequisites are certain colored meeples, so you need a gray one to do this. Well, I don't have a gray one. Well, cool, let me go to the town hall and do this, or maybe let me go get some silver, I'll get the gray one, now I can go do that. I love the tug of war that is putting and pulling the meeples in this game. Well, they're actually called Scythians. I'm aware, but they're meeples, you know what I'm saying? I got the Scythian hats. Anyway, point being, I like this game, I do. I don't know, though, if you own Raiders of the North Sea and all the expansions that you have to buy this one, though. That's where I'm confused. I, 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 am I missing something? I, I'm just, I don't understand it. However, this is where I also am confused. If you don't own either, I still like Raiders of the North Sea, the gameplay with the two expansions, better than I do Scythia by itself. I know that's not fair, because Scythia hasn't had time to have the two expansions really implement into this one. So I'm still confused if we're comparing base game, Raiders of the North Sea, to base game, Raiders of Scythia, Scythia wins. Hands down. I like the art better. I like the horses and eagles better. I like the other things that have come from some of the expansions, but there's no Fields of Fame and Halls of Heroes. None of that's there. But I like it better. So if this continues on the route and we get more Scythian stuff, then that's the way I'm going to go. If this is it, and there is no more for Scythia, then you got to go North Sea. It's just, I, I mean, I know that that sounds weird, but that's how I feel. Um, West Kingdom is a totally different thing, so I, I'm confused. Uh, again, if we're doing just base to base, and we're not doing anything in the future, you do North Sea. If Scythia is the start of a new series, 100% go Scythia. It's just better, that much better. Uh, just by a little bit, but it is. So, then again, though, if we're comparing it to other games, go get this game. It's a great, great worker placement experience. It's so much fun. The push and pull is great. The art looks good. I love the isometric views of the different countries, Scythia, Camaria. I want to say that's uh, Samaria, but I could be wrong. I don't know what Camaria actually is historically, but it's probably Samaria, I want to say. Uh, anyway, there's Assyria, Persia, and then Greece. I love just history in that era, the whole like uh, early, you know, first century, second century sort of stuff. Uh, I don't know when this exactly takes place, but obviously the horses and the eagles and all that sort of stuff is kind of AD stuff. But regardless, good game, so much fun. Go get it, go check it out. Go raid some Persians and Greeks and, uh, and uh, Assyrians all day. Do it, it'll be fun. What? That's the game. I mean, it's it's great. I love it. I'm still confused, but I love it. Go get it. Go play it. I'm Brian Drake, Dice Tower Brian. We'll see you next time.